away people to himself. He went to redeem us as a people unto himself by delivering us from out of Egypt. Like today, God set up Christ to deliver the children of Israel out of America, out of the slums and ghettos. Give me, um, read on, read on, read on. And then, I want you to hold uh, uh, John chapter 8, verse 32. Huh? Read on, read on. And to make him a name. And to do for you great things. He did for us great things. He gave us the laws that was a command. He parted the Red Sea. You read in our history how the Lord, he stopped the sun from going down so that we can destroy our enemies. He set up, the, you, read in this, you read in our history how the Lord made ransom of the other nations for our sake. Read on. And to do for you great things and terrible mm -hmm. for thy land before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, read, read. from the nations and their gods, for thou hast confirmed so to listen thyself. Up, listen up, brother. God redeemed us as a people from the nations and their gods. We don't know that. When we dabble and want to assemble with the other nations, like the Arab nations, I'm gonna give you an example, right? They worship the Mecca, right? The Kaaba stone, we have to make a homage. That's Islam. That's not uh, the faith of our forefathers. This is our faith right here. Hold the Bible up, bro. It teaches us laws, statutes, and commandments. Ways that we must keep to be holy in the sight of the Most High. Give me um, John chapter 8. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? We take now, any I just questions. thought that uh, mm -hmm. he, he Jews was the, the, uh, the first uh, the act of the that uh, that's the what we don't know is that they messed up. Right. Paul came and spread the word to the okay. I'm gonna clear that up real quick. I understand. Give me um give me uh uh Romans chapter three verse two. You what you don't understand is that there's been a doctrine push that the so-called black spirit of the is that we are Gentiles, but we are not Gentiles according to the Bible. According to the Bible, we're the truth. And it's going to prove it right now. I'm going to show you that with the Jews read. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Right. And what if some did not believe? And what if some did not believe this Bible read? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Shall their unbelief, the dispensation of not understanding God's word, make his word without effect? Read. God forbid. Uh -huh. Yea, let God be true. Let God be true. But every man a liar. Every man a liar. Let me get verse 1. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then has the Jew? What advantage then have the Jew? We are the Jews according to the Bible read. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Right. Verse two. Much every way. Uh -huh. Chiefly because that, that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Unto the children of Israel were committed the oracles of God. Now give me Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse uh verse 16. I'm gonna show you, like you said earlier, until the children of Israel messed up, right? So we're gonna um we just let's say right now we don't need the children of Israel. We're gonna there's gonna be um prophecy that we're gonna decide to show the children of Israel are read that verse 28 verse 16 28 verse 16 read Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with shit. Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Right. Thou shalt see it no more again. Brother, come up here. I want you to see this picture. Come on. I want you to see this one. Read it from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with shit. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with shit. There's a, what does Egypt mean? This is way loud. Yeah. Let's show them what Egypt means. Give me the scripture for that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I'm going to show you what Egypt means. Because the Bible is a big parable. Some things are made plain and some things are made a great mystery. So when it says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt, it's synonymous for slavery. Us as a people. Now what nation of people went through slavery? When you just think about slavery, who do you come to? The so-called blacks and Hispanics, right? Let's get that. Peter. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. That's what we're trying to find out right now. Out of the land of Egypt. Read. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. What is bondage? Mean? 
like our brothers and sisters in these uh, prisons today, they're in bondage, right? Their freedom has been taken away from them, right? When we were in the 1600s, 1619, we was in bondage. By who? The European Caucasian race, right? That's our enemy, right? I'm like, remember that point I just said right now, all right? So now, and the Lord, read scripture. And the Lord shall bring thee out of the house of no. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of slavery. Now go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into... What, what I'm doing, I'm trying to make a Bible plain to you. Because in our community, it's been taught as a mystery. Everybody says, oh, we holy, we holy, we holy. What does that mean? We the children of God. What does that mean? Who the children of Israel? We don't know what these things mean. But the prophets of God have come to show our people the right way. That's what we're doing right now. So now read it. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. And the Lord shall bring thee into slavery. Read. Again. Again. Right? With ships. Look at this right here. I mentioned slavery earlier. What nation of people went on slave on ships, man? Just us. So called Mexicans and Latinos. See what I'm saying? Verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord is going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. Look at here. See that right there? That you, you, so you basically understand that that happened to us, right? So what's your nationality? Not black America, Israel. I'm a child of Jews. Remember, I showed you. Read on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with shit. The Lord is going to bring you into slavery again with shit. That only happens to me. The so called black space here. Read on. By the way, where we're all, I spake unto thee. The transatlantic slave trade was a curse placed upon the children of Israel for breaking his law. You understand what I'm saying? Read verse 15. Verse 15. Right. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments. And we did keep his commandments, read on. And his statutes, right. which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses. All these what? Curses. What? Curses. Curses will come upon us. Generational curses as a nation will come upon us as a nation. This slavery was being brought over here in the 1600s on slave ships was a curse the children of Israel. Give me verse 48. I'm gonna make it even more plain. The most high gonna show you even more plain on who we are as a people. Read on, read, read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Uh -huh. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. You hear that, bro? We're gonna serve our enemies. Read on. Which the Lord shall set against thee uh -huh. in a hunger uh -huh. and in thirst right. and in nakedness and in want of all things. Read. And he shall and put he, that enemy. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon that neck. You don't have a picture of it? Read it from the top. Let me show you real quick. Read Therefore the shalt thou serve thine enemy. Who's the enemy of the so-called uh, right black Spanish and Native American enemy? When we were in slavery, who put chains on our necks? The so-called white man. The devil that the Bible speaks of. Everybody knows that. It's not a mystery. Read from the top. Read. Therefore, uh -huh. shalt thou serve thine enemy, Read. which the Lord shall send against which you. Which the Lord shall send against you. Why? Because we broke his commandments. You see that, please? The Lord sent the enemy against us to break his commandments. Read all three. You right. And that's why we're still setting curses at the people. Read. Read. And in nakedness, uh -huh. and in want of all things. Anything you want, like that cell phone you got in your hand. You have to go to your enemies for a marriage license, so on and so forth. You have to go to your enemies for that license, for those materials, for those resources. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron. He shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck. So now, I'm going to ask you again. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 1. Read that. Who are we as a nation? These are just one of the two. These are just two curses that I read to you about being brought on over in the Americas on slave ships. And it's not only in the Americas, but it's in South America, Guatemala, the Caribbean islands, Haiti, so on and so forth. You see what I'm saying? The transatlantic slave trade was a curse set upon the nation of Israel. And we're proving it out of the Bible. We're teaching our people to come back. Wait, wait, come back, come back. Say again, say again. Don't run.
I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. Yes, sir. Come here. You right, sir. Come here for a second. You right. I want you to repeat what you said. You said who's going to help us out of this? We are. We the prophets of the Most High. We're here to deliver all, all you so-called men out here, black men. You are the Israelites, and we got the answers to how we fix our community right here. Give me Joshua one and eight. Come on, you come back and teach. That's a good question. That's the question that needs to be asked. How do we fix our society? How do we fix it that we no longer on drugs? We no longer murder. We no longer steal. We got to come back. Give me out Joshua 1 and 8. Give me Hosea. I need two readers. Give me Hosea. How does he get out of this state that he is? We're going to tell you right now. We're trying to show you. First, we're going to tell you why you're in the state. If you stay for a second, we're going to tell you. Hosea, give me Hosea. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So the man asked a good question. Who's going to be the next Moses? Who's going to lead the people? You're looking at them right now. I know we look hard to you because we're in the corner screaming, but we tell you, you're the greatest people God ever created, but you're in a bad state right now. So what does it say? My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. That's, That's how right. they destroyed because they lack the knowledge of the Bible. Does a so-called black man understand that you cannot shop today? Does a so-called black man understand that you got to be home raising your children? Does a so-called black man understand that he's over his wife? No, he does not know that. Why? Because you're lying churches have not taught you the words of God. That's right. So you want to know where the, de where the deliverance is coming from? It's coming right here on the cut of 149 and Melrose, the prophets of the Most High God. Read it again. What? Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Read on. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Because we rejected the commandments of God. I will also reject thee. And you know what rejection is? Captivity. Look at the state of our men today. We don't have no love for each other. We would kill each other in a heartbeat for money, for drugs. Brother, you got a question? You sure? Come, let me talk to you for a second. You look like a wise man. You afraid? Uh, you know we're your brother, right? You know that we destroyed as a people? You know that? You look like you wise beyond your years. Do you know that we destroyed as our people? Let's go, drop that, give me that. Joshua, chapter one. Verse 8. So how do we come out of here? We're going to show you how we prosper. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That's what happened. The book of the law departed from our mouth, and then we went to captivity. Read on. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That's what we got to do. We got to meditate in the laws of the Most High. We got to meditate. Uh, how do we give me that? What does the Lord just me? What's that? Do you know me? Yeah. Read on. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. And all people don't know that. I didn't know that at one time. What does God want me to do? What should I do? I was smoking weed, I was a thief. I was a whoremonger. Then I learned the laws of God. And that's the first step to rebuilding our community. Put our wives back in order, our children in order, put ourselves in order. Then read on. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. So you want to get out of here, the Lord just gives. He gives us the blueprint on how to fix it. We come back to the laws, and then what's going to happen? And then thou shalt have good success. And that's how we're going to success. And the success is that we're going to come out of here. So the brother asked the question, well, where's the next man to lead us? It wasn't Martin Luther King. It wasn't Al Sharpton. It wasn't Reverend T.D. Jakes. They're not leading you back to who you are, that you're the Israelites. That's the driver of the prophets of the Most High. I know we might seem odd to you, but we show you love right now. Because judgment's going to come on this earth, and if we don't get ourselves right with the Lord by keeping His commandments and faith in Christ, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. That's right. So watch this. I'm asking the question. Who out here say they love God? Who out here say they believe in the Bible? All people are far from God. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Read. And now, Israel, what? Do of the Lord thy God require of thee. So now he said, what does the Lord require? The Lord has requirements that he asks for us. He wants certain things that we do that we can be accepted. We can tell it hasn't worked so far. Look at us. Look at where we're living at. Look at our conditions. Drugged out, whoremongering, homosexuality, thievery. All those things separate us from God. So what does the Lord require of us? Read on. But to fear the Lord thy God. All people have no fear of God. That's why they're out here today shopping. They do not fear God's commandments. They do not fear there will be a judgment. Read to walk 
in all his ways. To walk in his ways. You know what people do? They put that down and they walk in Islam. They walk in Rastafarianism. They walk in politics. But they will not abide in God's commandments. So we're looking for the black man, the so-called Hispanic man, that's ready to make a change in the community. Get off the drugs. Raise your children where you're at, we're looking for you so we can build a station. Oh, you want a lying church over there? Read it against the top. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God. You know what, you know what the benefit okay. of loving okay. the Lord is? Brother right here with the top one, let me reason with you. What have you been taught? What's your nationality? Okay. So talk, talk, So how do we find that? We got to come back to this. But what the Bible says, my people did not consider. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. The ox know of his owner, and the ass his master's crib. The Bible says an animal will understand who his owner is, and the ass his master's crib. Read on. But Israel do have not known. My people do have not consider. But that's all people we don't know, nor do we want to consider. All we know is that tomorrow is the Puerto Rican Day Parade. That's all we know about how to revel. Out of drunkenness. Read on. Ah, sinful nation. That's all people. We are sinful people who don't want to know what God requires of us. Read on. Hey, people, laden with iniquity. Laden with iniquity. Laden in drugs. Laden in alcohol. Laden in philosophies. Read on. A seed of evildoers. What did the Lord call us? A seed of evildoers. So now we got to learn what are we doing wrong? How do we fix it? Read on. Children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. We have what? They have forsaken the Lord. And in forsaking the Lord, we went into captivity. He turned his back on us. He had joy in destroying us because we did not have joy in him. His old sins found us, and we were brought here to the Americas as slaves. And we're trying to show people the redemption out of that, how to fix it. Now we're asking you so-called black men, who out here wants to make a change? Who wants to see different and do different? Come back to the laws of the Most High God. So, so this is our agenda. We're trying to gather the nation of Israel. We're trying to gather our people to come back to the nation. But who amongst us as a nation right now is gonna do that? Free. So, chapter 94, verse 16. Right. Who will rise up for me? Read it strong, read it loud. Yeah. Who will rise up for me? Who will rise up for God? Read. Against the evil doers. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. We are here to rise up against the evil doers. Who is the evil doer? The so-called white man. The, the, the border of wickedness, the Bible will explain about. Read it from the top. Who? will rise up for me against the evil doers. And also the wicked of our people. They are evil doers. We are seed, we are, the, we are a seed of evil doers, man. Why? Because we do not know God's law. Read on. Or who will stand up for me against the work of iniquity? What is iniquity? Sin. Who will rise up for God against the workers of iniquity? Read on. Unless the Lord have been my help, my soul, had almost dwelt in silence. Brother in the blue shirt, what's your name? The Lord is your help, man. Whether you reject it or not, you need to come back to God and keep his commandments. Let's get a commandment real quick. Give me the law and the beard. I'm gonna show you the love God set for you to keep. 
We keep talking about the commandments, the commandments, the commandments. What are the commandments? We're going to give you a commandment. Read. Look. I'm about to be a read. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. Right. Ye shall not round the corners of your head. Our Israelite, so-called blacks and Hispanics, are not supposed to round the corner of your head. We ain't supposed to have bald heads. Read. Neither shall thou mark the corners of thy beard. A man is supposed to have a beard on his face. Christ had a beard. King Solomon had a beard. God has a beard. Read. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cutting in their flesh. That goes into having tattoos and everything. You see this right here? When I was in the world, I did these things. But when I came to the knowledge of the Most High, I don't do that no more. You won't find me in a tattoo parlor or anything like that. And that's the same thing with you, brother. You don't have a beard right now, grow a beard. You are made after the image of God. Let's show you the image of God. You see this right here? This is the description of Christ, according to the Bible. You see that? Black man with white woolly hair. This is the image that we're getting our people to come back to as a nation. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. To come back to the image of God by keeping his law. Let's get that. Give me that in uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. How did God look? How did the Messiah look? These are questions we should ask according to the Bible. Not, not this lie that has been pushed throughout this world. This ain't in the Bible. Read. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days is the Heavenly Father. He has no beginning, no end of days. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. God's garment was white as snow. Read. And the, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Read that part again. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. You take that stocking off your head right now, you're going to have hair of what? Read. His throne was like the fiery flame. No. Read the pure wool part. And whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. I made a statement earlier. We're getting our people to come back to the image of God, right? God, the Ancient of Days, had hair like the pure wool. Now, let's get his son, Christ. Give me Revelation chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. I'm going to show you that image is this right here, that we must come back to. Christ had a beard on his face. You got to keep a beard on your face, brother. Thus said the law, not because of what I'm saying, because of the words of God. You hear it for yourself. Read. Revelation chapter 1 verse 13. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Verse 14. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. His head. His head. And like your head. See this right here? His head. Read. And his hair. And his hairs, meaning the hairs on his face. His beard, right? Were white like wool. Isn't that the same thing we read? In Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, the ancient of days had hair pure like the wool. Read. As white as snow. As white as snow. Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because Christ drank wine lawfully in moderation. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. And Christ's feet like unto fine brass. This damn lie is not true. Okay? This has been a lie that's been pushed throughout the whole world, and this is Christ. Read that about the feet again. Read. And his feet like unto fine bread. And God's feet, Christ's feet like unto fine bread. This is a damn error. This is Caesar Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. This is a daggone sodomite and effeminate that was set up to, be, to have the image of the beast. That's right. Read it from the top again. That last verse. And his feet like unto fine bread, as if they burn in a furnace. And his feet like unto fine bread, as if they burn into a furnace. If you take anything and put it in a furnace, what color does it turn? You take white rice and put it in a furnace, what's going to happen to it? It's going to turn black. It's going to burn up, right? Read it again. And his feet like unto fine bread, as if they burned in a furnace. Christ was a very, very, very dark-skinned man. Now, let's get that uh, John chapter 3, verse 28. Because you may be thinking, oh, that's just my interpretation. No, that's not my interpretation. That's what the Bible says. So you got to believe that. 
earlier, you, earlier you said, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I am. According to the Bible, God said you are the nation of Israel. You got to come back to his laws, man. One of those other laws also, eat swine, pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. There's some need on what the scripture says. Now, I showed you earlier that Christ came in the image of a dark-skinned man with white woolly hair. With the scripture, not my own words or interpretation. Now, read this. John chapter 7, verse 38. Mm -hmm. He that believeth on me, he that believeth on Christ, read, as the scripture has said. Know what John Lostein said. Out of his no, read that part again. As the scripture had said, as the scripture has said, read from the top. He that believeth on me, he that believeth on Christ, read, as the scripture had said. No, as uh, T.D. Jakes said, read, as the scripture had said. What my grandma taught me in church, as the scripture had said, our own interpretation, as the scripture had said, we have to believe on Christ as the scripture have said, man. That's the only way we gonna come out of this thing. How did Christ come? Like this, as the scripture has said. You see that? He came looking like you. Let's get it again. Give me um, Psalms of Solomon chapter one, verse five. So, you say you don't consider yourself Christian, right? Or anything like that? Okay, well Christianity is a lie. Christianity is a lie. You got this big behind church over here and you still got sin in our communities, man. What, what sense does that make? I thought the church was supposed to fix the problems of our community, spiritually. But it has, not been, it has not done that. That's why the prophets have been sent to our people to spiritually educate us as a nation. What we have to do. The mind has to be right first before the nation can be perfect before the outside of the Lord. Read. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black, but come. We, I am black, but come. What did King Solomon say? I am black. But come, King Solomon was also the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus Christ. Read it from the top. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Uh -huh. I am black. Read, from, read, read it back. Black am I. Black am I. Plain and simple, black am I. I am black, right? Read on. But come, but come, meaning beautiful. Because us as a people, we are precious. To have dark skin or to have pigmentation in our in ourselves. Read on. Oh ye daughters of Jerusalem. So King Solomon is singing a song right now to the daughters of Jerusalem. Read. As the text of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Uh -huh. Look not upon me, because I am black. So he's not saying anything that's a mystery or a parable. He says, look not upon me because I am black. He's he's giving a description of how he looks, right? Right? So now, if we stand out here in the sun, like right now I'm standing out in the sun, what's gonna happen to me? I'm gonna get dark and dark and dark, right? Let's see what King Solomon says. I want you to keep this in mind, read. I'm, I'm showing you right now that the people of the Bible are black. The laws were given to the nation of Israel. You saw about blacks in the Spanish. Anytime you hear about the nation of Israel, us as a people, we don't know that because we've been lied that we're African American. So on and so forth, right? Or Hispanic, or Jamaican, or Haitian, or West Indian. Look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun had looked upon me. Because the what? The sun had looked upon me. Because the sun had looked upon me, man. So the sun, like now, is looking upon us. We get darker and darker. That's what Solomon is saying right now. You see that? So now, even the first man, Adam, he was a black, dark-skinned man. Read that. Let me get uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. What, what I'm doing right now, I'm just showing you the basic fundamentals of the scriptures. Because we don't know as a people that the laws and statutes were given to us. That this is our book. It's been preached that this book is for all nations. But that's not what the Bible says when you open it up and study for yourself. Read. And the Lord God, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Uh -huh. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. What, what is the color of the ground? The dust on the ground, or, or dirt, right? So now, what's your nationality? 
What does the enemy, the white man, call you, baby? What's your nationality? He calls you what? Black, African American, right? According to the Bible, you are of the tribe of Judah. Because you said you don't know who you are, right? The so-called blacks and Hispanics are the children of Israel. You are of the tribe of Judah, man. So when you leave here, instill that in your head. You hear me? Read that. Uh, give me, um, read that again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis 2 and 7. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 7. Right. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now, give me Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. So now, I'm showing you again your nationality. You don't know that. That's also a part of you repenting. When you go into the scriptures, it says, Yet it, they shall bethink themselves. Come back to the nationality. I'm going to read it for you later on. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Uh huh. Judah morning. Judah morning. That's your tribe. That's the tribe also of Christ, the black Messiah. That's right. Read it from the top. Judah morning and the gates thereof language. Judah morning, bro, and the gates thereof language. We are in the gates languishing right now in hell, man. Look at this community right now. You got garbage paper on the floor. You got men pissing everywhere on the ground. Read on. They are black unto the ground. They are what? They are black. Unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. More color in the Bible. But what does your pastor say? Color don't matter. The Bible matters. Now, let me get uh, <coughs> Sirach chapter 17, verse 25. Sirach 17, 25. <coughs> Sirach chapter 17 and verse 5. I'm sorry, hold that. Verse 1. This is the book of the commandment of God. Read it from the top. This is the book of the commandment of God. You hear that, Judah? Are hey, you hear that, Judah? Read it again. This is the book of the commandment of God. This right here is the book of the commandment of God. I showed you your nationality. Now I'm going to teach you the law. I read to you earlier. You got to keep a beard on your face. Why? Because Christ kept a beard. And we consider ourselves followers of Christ. We gotta keep beards on our face. Every single brother up here got beards on their face. You see what I'm saying? Read. This is the book of the commandments of God. All right. And the law that endureth forever. And the law that endureth forever. Because if you keep in the law and it endures in you forever, you gonna live forever. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life. When you keep God's commandments, you are gonna become alive in the eyesight of the Most High God. But right now, the so-called blacks and Hispanics are dead as a nation. We don't know how to serve God. We don't have the vision that was given to us by God, which was what? Keep his commandments. Read. But such as leave it. If you leave God's commandments, what's gonna happen? Shall die. And still that in your head. If you don't keep God's commandments, you will die. According That's to the right. Bible. That's what God said. So, we're teaching fear to our people to keep his commandments. You might say, hey, hey listen, I ain't dead yet. I'm 35, 40, 50 years old, man. I've been doing this for a long time. Ain't nothing happening to me yet. Let's get that. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 8. What is that? Verse 11. That's the wicked mindset of our people. It don't matter. Oh, good. I don't still kill God or nothing like that, man. God has set the prophets to show our people diligently how to keep his laws, how to love him. Read. Chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. I'm going yes. to show you the, the, the weakness of a man right now, the mind state of a man. Read. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. Because sentence against e and evil work. You know what an evil work is? Read it, read it loud from the top again. Because because sentence, because sentence meaning a judgment, read, against an evil work. Against an evil work. Like adultery, that's an evil work. Killing is an evil work. Hatred is an evil work. Read it from the top. Because sentence against an evil work. Because sentence against an evil work, uh huh, is not executed speedily. That's like if you're stealing, right? And you don't get caught. That's what the Bible's saying right now. You don't get judged of the most high right then and there. Read. Therefore, 
the heart of the sons of men. Therefore, the heart of the children of Israel, the sons of men, is fully set in them to do evil. It's fully set in that man to do evil. He continues to do his sin. You understand that, what he's saying? That's the mind state of our people, the wicked. But we are here to give them back and show them the Lord again. Now give me that back in Sirach, chapter um, 17. Sirach 17, verse 25. Sirach, chapter 17, verse 25. Return unto the Lord. Judah. What's your name, brother? Tell me your name, man. We ain't, we ain't your enemy, man. You too afraid to give me your name, bro? Come on, man. We got to come out of that, that, that weak spirit, that wicked mind state, man. See what I'm saying? Listen, listen to what God said. Read that. Return unto the Lord and forsake the thy sin. Stand up like a man and return to the Lord. Who shall rise up against me, against the evil? Who shall rise up for the Lord against the evil do? Against the workers of iniquity. Read it from the top. Return unto the Lord. Return unto the Lord. How? Read. It. And forsake thy sin. You gotta forsake your sin. What is sin? The breaking of God's laws. Read on. Make thy prayer before his face. Make your prayer before his face. After you confess your sins and forsake them, you make your prayer before God. If you're, if you're praying to God right now and you're still in the midst of sin, he ain't hearing your prayer. Read on. And offend less. And offend less. I'll break his commandments less. Read on. Turn again to the most high. Turn again to the most high. What does that mean? Keep from that wicked, lustful mind, like that woman that just walked by. I saw you, your, your eye color too, right? That's, that's that, that's that seems against the evil work right there. Because we're so instilled in this community to look at the lust, sex. You see what I'm saying? We have to stay focused in the Most High God's um, law, such as the commandments. That whore that just walked by will promote adultery, boredom. You see what I'm saying? That's where all these brothers out here are pushing the true understanding of God. Three. Turn again to the Most High uh -huh. and turn away from iniquity. Turn away from iniquity. I bet you nine times out of ten, you go down the street right there. Ask them right now how to go to the kingdom of heaven. How to keep God's commandments. Say again. Because of how she looks. Come closer. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Come below. I can't hear you. Bro, I can't hear you. Come on closer. How about what? Hold on. Because of our appearance. Uh, Let's go read it. Exodus 19 verse 29. Right. A man may be known by his look. A person gonna be known by their look. Uh, One that has understanding. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What you saying? Yeah. Uh, okay. Listen. I didn't judge her. I, I did not condemn her at all. I didn't condemn her. When you say judge, you think you're saying condemn. I didn't condemn her. Yeah. I can judge you. You wake up in the morning doing judgment. Everybody judge. I know what you said. Okay. Read it. So, right, chapter 19, verse 29. A man may be known by his look. I'm asking you a question. Why did you look at her? Because of how she looks. Hey, man, look, look, look. I'm going to tell you straight. It's no mystery what we see out here as a people. We know what we see, right? You know why you was looking. Read on. A man may be known by his look. That's how I know. Because how she dressed, she dresses like a whore. Okay? And listen, one, listen, listen. She had a skirt. She had a skirt above her knees. The scriptures explain how women are supposed to dress moderately. See what I'm saying? Read. One that had understanding by his countenance. When thou meetest him. A man having the standard of the countenance when you meet him. Read on. A man's attire and excessive laughter and gait show what he is. You can tell a lot about a person by how they look, how they walk, how they talk. See what I'm saying? What's your question? Right. Let me ask you a question now. What's your nationality? Huh? Guyana? Guyana? Okay. Ghana, Africa. Ghana, Africa, right? Okay. Well, you may be able to travel. I'm in a police. You see what I'm saying? The so called Blacks and Spanish Native American Indians, they were sold uh, onto the white man, the Grecian. Let me get that. Joel chapter 3. Verse 6. We were sold onto the Grecian. The so called Blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians were sold to the white Caucasian race. 
and slave. And we're gonna prove it out of the Bible. This is the book of prophecy. It prophesied of God's chosen people. Joel chapter 3, verse 6. The children also of Judah. The children also of Judah. And the children so called black America. Okay? We don't. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians. Have you sold unto the Grecians? Who are the Grecians? Grecians. Grecians. Somebody got a little bit of the Bible put it back to the school. The definition of Grecians. Grecians are the, the Greeks. See what I'm saying? Okay, y'all. The Grecians are the Greeks. All right? Now, read it from the top again. The children, also of Judah, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem uh -huh. have ye sold unto the Grecians. Have ye sold unto the Grecians. Now let's, let's get uh uh let's get Isaiah chapter 14 verse 4. Since we were sold unto the Grecians, the so-called black Spanish Native American Indians, we were sold unto the white man by the Africans, by the heathens, by the strangers, right. by the servants, God's servants. We are not Africans. We are the children of Israel. Right. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1. So let's see the consequence of us, the children of Israel, being sold to our enemy by the African breed. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. For the Lord, the Lord said he was going to have mercy upon Jacob. And will yet choose Israel. And will only choose Israel. Read. And set them in their own land. And set them in our own land. Because right now, we are not in our homeland. Give me Micah chapter 2 verse 10. We are not in our homeland. We are in the land of our captivity. The homeland of the black man and black woman is Jerusalem. The Hispanic man and Hispanic woman, Native American man and Native American woman, is not Africa. It's Jerusalem. Read that. Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Huh? Arise ye and depart. Arise ye, O Israel, and depart out of what? For America. Read on. For this is not your rest. America is not our rest. Right. This is not the land, the promised land. We got to come out of America. Because it is our Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest. For this is not our rest. Arise ye, meaning what? Come back to God and keep his commandments. Read. Because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with a sword destruction. The, law, the land of America will has destroyed the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. How? By teaching, by teaching us this lying image right here, this lying falsehood right here. That's right. That Christ was white. Right. That's how we have been polluted in this land by Christianity. By Islam, by Mormonism, Catholicism, so on and so forth. Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. America is not the rest of the so-called black, Spanish, and Native American Indians.